What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to yet another Star Coding web dev tutorial. We're going to be in our part four of this episode, and we have an exciting challenge in front of us. We're going to be doing some email SMTP. Let's first show kind of what our website is looking like now. It's been a week of me just doing CSS and all that jazz. And as you can see here, this is our landing page. I'm in love with it right now. You know, we have a little typewriter um, thing going. So that way it iterates through a list of, of titles and it, it looks professional, gives it some some life. You know, it's not all just sitting there looking pretty. So that's that's the home page. We have an about page. We got a nice little transition going on here that kind of goes through that. Good stuff. Um, the blog page is looking good. You know, another transition here happening. Um, and these guys, you know, you have a title. Um, a short description, date, read more, takes you to the link. Um, so that's fun. Loving it here. And so what we're going to be working on today is the contact page. So what we have here is just, you know, a simple web form. Um, you enter your name, email, purpose, yada, 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 click submit, and it's supposed to send me an email. The purpose of this, obviously, is, you know, make your idea a reality. You know, if someone has a software idea, then they don't know how to code it up, just hit your boy up and we'll make it happen. So that's the point of this part of the, of the website, and we're going to be diving into it, so let's look at it. So a few changes have happened since the last time we've looked at the source code. You know, I wanted to do some modular modularity, some high cohesion, low coupling. So for our main package, all you're going to see really is the functionality for reading templates and handling the handlers. That's fun to say, handling the handlers. <laughs> um, so that information's all here. And we have a new blog package and a new contact package, which we're going to populate in this uh, video today. And the blog is everything that we did in video two and three. Fun stuff. So when we go to this main file, we're going to be working here in our contact handler. And so one thing you might notice is that we are not going to be dealing with a post request. So there's a form. And when this user um, goes to fill out information on this form, we need to capture it and do something with it. Um, and that is going to be done through a post request. There's already a form in the HTML uh, part of the code, which we can navigate to no problem. We go to contact here and we scroll down. We'll see that there is a form post and the actions pointing to the um, contact handler. So it's the same address as the get request was. And then we have some, some, some things here. We have like a name field, an email field, purpose field. So when we go to this um, handler now, we can get the method by calling the, the method attribute on um, our HTTP request. And if we use a switch statement, this just returns whatever value is in the method. If it's equal to get, We'll just display the page because they're getting the page. Um, they're not doing any any data stuff. So, okay, the page is yours, sir. If it's a post request, then we need to do something first before displaying it back to them. And I already kind of got the parsing of the form data um, to where it'll all print out. And we can do this real quick. Ugh. So, you know, Bob Jones, our boy Billy Bob, um, I don't even know why I said Billy Bob, but Bobby, um, you know, if I click submit, you can see here that the post form is a map of all this information and we can display it out like this. So we have the information here. Now it's time to actually send that email using uh, SMTP, which is the simple mail transfer transport protocol, I believe. I believe that's what it is. So, yeah, on to making some email functionality. Okay, it's been a minute, but I'm feeling fairly confident that we're getting some emails uh, coming through. And let's just test this real quick for you guys so y'all can see it live action, and then we'll explain it in detail. 
So this is just a, you know, we're on our, our form page and we want to send an email. Okay, cool. Fill it out with some information. Click submit. Redirects me to this page still. That needs to get cleaned up, uh, which should, you know, just not be too much of an issue. But when we go and check our inbox, you'll notice that we have a new email and it doesn't get flagged as spam, which is kind of cool. Um, and this was, yeah, this is one I just sent. I, I literally, when you send yourself emails in the span of like <laughs> within 10 minutes, they kind of link them together. But so we have Bob Jones, you know, all the information's here. Cool. SMTP is done. Now let's look at this file real quick and try to dissect what's actually going on. So our main goal is to send an email, as you all know. And so what do you need when it comes to email? You need someone that's coming from, someone that's going to, maybe a subject and a body. So that's kind of like the basic things that are going on here. You know, we have a from, which is just a dummy email I made on, on the fly. This is going to be, you know, on the internet, so I didn't want to really have sensitive information out there. Um, the password is being read from a file and will be used later. You know, you can put the password in plain text, chillin'. I am recording a video, so that wouldn't be cool. But also, if someone were to grab hold of your binary, your executable, and run it in a reverse engineering um, software, like Gehydra, I think I'm pronouncing that right. They could just see your your password in the file, which is <laughs> not what you want. So definitely keep the password somewhere far away and grab it when you need it. That is the goal. And we also have a list of people to send this email to. So if you had an email list, that would be, you know, something you can use it for. And then we have our server configuration. So we're going to be using Gmail. And this is what Gmail says to use. If we look at their documentation in one of these files, um, you'll see that we can send outgoing mail on their SMTP server using this address and this port. SSSL or SSL was, you know, the precursor to TLS, and it's kind of old. You can still use it; they still accept it. But TLS is, you know, what you want to use if you're using modern encryption standards back to the code and one of the main headaches I had actually going through this was this whole formatting problem that occurs with SMTP there is like a standard internet protocol that is used uh, and it, it has its own RFC uh, file somewhere in the depths of the archive which is a request for comment file for y'all that are wondering and it needs these the, a specific format in the form of bytes and so you'll notice that we have a four and a two, a subject and a message, uh, and we combine it all here. It needs, and when I was going through it, I was like, okay, let me just put four, two, subject. It needs the, um, it specifically needs the from, the two to be formatted this way with the backslash r, backslash n, not just a backslash n. I believe that's because the way that a Windows machine interprets a new line character is a little bit different than Linux. Don't quote me on that, but that is how they interpret new line characters is with the R in. So we're going to combine all this text, make it a byte array, and send it over the internet. First, we have to authenticate, and I'm not going to lie, I was very scared when I was looking at this function named plain auth. I mean, what? Am I just sending my stuff over the internet unencrypted? Uh, that's what I thought for the longest time, but we actually are authenticating ourselves in an encrypted way, and we can just do this real quick. Uh, if I pull up Wireshark, let's, I'm doing this on a separate screen. Hold up, I'm just getting it configured. Let's uh, let's go for SMTP. So we're we're scanning right now we're just chilling on our internet connection and we are going to send an email and see what happens using the code that we see here and actually before we do that let's just let's just look at the RFC document to say to show what we're supposed to see so using this plain authentication what we should see is an exchange of information in a client and a server and kind of what happens is they they talk 
and they find an encryption standard that they can both work on, and then they start TLS. Uh, and then once the TLS negotiation begins, that is when your information is sent over the web. So technically, although the function name is plain auth, it's actually just a way of, I think, I think plain auth means you're just sending your password without it being hashed and it gets encrypted with TLS before it gets sent over the internet. Fun stuff. So we should see something along these lines being sent over the wire when we send an email. And let us check to make sure we're still watching. Sending the same email over again. And now when I open up Wireshark, we should see some information being sent over the web, some SMTP protocol, and we can follow this stream of data. I think it will show us the whole exchange that kind of takes place. There is a lot of nonchalance going on, but as you can see, there's that initial Synax and it's TCP, and these three handshakes are common with every TCP request. But if we scroll down, we see kind of these, uh, I guess, I how does one even say this? But the start TLS does take place on the Gmail server right here. And then after that, you'll notice that um, all the information is going to be going to be encrypted. And if we look at it in the um, in I guess a text editor view that Wireshark provides, you'll see that we start TLS. Um, some other things take place. And then you kind of can't understand what else is taking place. So that's kind of what we want. But I was looking up uh, a lot with this plane off. I kind of got curious and was getting, uh, you know, taken away. And there are some concerns when it comes to Start TLS. I don't care because this is something simple and something that won't affect me if um, this email were to get hacked, I mean, it would be a shame. I'd be very sad, but all in all, like, there's not anything sensitive on this email, so, but let's dive into some flaws that are with Start TLS. And I do realize that this is just a simple Go website tutorial, so I'm not going to go into detail with how TLS downgrade attacks work, but know that it does exist. I didn't want to just <laughs> do this and be like, oh yeah, like you're completely fine if you use plain auth. No, like it, it is susceptible to some attacks. Um, however, for our use case, I mean, all you're sending is uh, your email address, a purpose and a description there there's not really anything sensitive that i feel is worth protecting but if you're like an enterprise or a business and you needed to send emails you probably want to know this that this exists um you know it, the risk of such a whole is, is pretty small but it, it does exist and it's something that is out there essentially it's one of those things where a man in the middle is going to kind of ARP spoof, change their MAC address to um, act like the server. Because in the beginning, in these first opening lines of communication, can I reopen that? Here, let's reopen this guy. So like in these first exchanges, it is not encrypted. And someone, if they were to snip this portion of your internet traffic, they would be like, okay, I can come in and be the man in the middle. Um, for that before this encryption begins. So that is the vulnerability for us. Not too, not too much of a problem, but know that it does exist and I hope you learned something new. Back to the code. So we have all of this working. We have authentication, we send the email, and now let's go back and make it to where when we send the email, it redirects to a good looking page. Oh, with our HTML stuff, we should have a post method when the email sent, and we're going to parse the information, send an email, and execute a new page layout. And the only thing that's really different about this new page layout is the fact that there is a little toast that appears. So now, if I open up a web browser and let me pull it over, 
So I come over here, um, you know, put in some stuff, something cool again. Just the classic. Hear those keyboards <laughs> typing. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, when we send this uh, email, send successfully. So that's going to wrap it up. There was a lot of information in this video, so it's going to be a little, little bit longer. But I am pretty satisfied with this being the website for the time being. There's a little things I want to add. Um, maybe make the HTML a, a touch touch better. I know I want to get a different font because uh, this is just like the default font. I think we can make things a little bit more interesting. But I think we're just going to jump on into setting this up on a Heroku machine next and seeing how that is. So that way it's accessible from projectstar.io instead of my local host 8080. But that will be in the next video. So thanks for watching, guys, and take care.